Greetings from Keytron USA and today we're going to talk about the new Keytron event module called the EVM. The EVM is a new module from Keytron, tiny little box, we have it stashed in the back there just to show you exactly what this does. You don't need to have direct access to the module because yes, you can control that with a touch screen like the one we have before us here. So if you purchase the bundle, you can actually have that with the screen and a little nice bag, of course, to accompany you carry all your accessories. But you can either use a regular touch screen or you can use your iPad or your existing tablet. And that allows you to be able to connect to the EVM wirelessly. Yes, you can control that wirelessly from your existing tablet as well. So before us, we're gonna use the actual screen provided by Keytron, which is a 15.9 inch screen, okay? And the beauty about this screen is that it allows you to have access to all the parameters at a glance. So if you think about the Keytron Event X, which is the regular module with a touch control surface built onto the module, that has the buttons on the panel plus the screen as well. Or if you think about the Keytron keyboard uh, event or the Event 61, again, the keyboard with the touch screen and the panel, what Keytron have done is they have taken the instrumentation, they've taken the panels, they've taken all the buttons over here and provided those over here on the screen. So if you look at this image right here, this part of the screen is your center screen of your regular Keytron event, which you look at that way. If you put it like that, you have access to your screen just as you do on the regular event or the regular event module. And over here on the side, all of this are your panel controls that you would normally have on the Keytron event or the Keytron event module. And all the sliders have been brought over here. So this is the best way to be able to 
better understand the layout of this new interface for this new module. So again, how does this work? Pretty simple. All you do is you actually access your controls on the screen and you can move that by simply touching a function or a feature and moving it up and down. So in this example here, I can here start a style, okay? With the start button. And I can control instantly the drums on that style, bring down the bass. So right now I'm using an arranger keyboard by a different manufacturer to control the event. And that keyboard is connected to the event EVM just by one cable. Either you use a MIDI cable or you can use a USB cable. So you do have a physical connection. You can also use a wireless MIDI interface as well, but I don't necessarily suggest that. Too many wireless around. But again, back to what we're discussing here, you, you can use an arranger keyboard and connect that to the EVM and put that anywhere. You can have it in the back, you can have it next to you, you can have it underneath you. The module is small and compact. It can pretty much fit anywhere you want to because what you need is just the control surface, the control screen before you. Again, like I said before, once you have that connected, in this case with the screen, you actually have it connected physically with a USB and an HDMI cable. If you use an iPad or a tablet, you can have that connect wirelessly to the event module. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you the advantages, the pros and cons of each of those connections and who really is the EVM for. The EVM, by the way, is not a replacement module. It does not replace any of the current uh, event series products is an addition, it's an add-on to that particular family, especially for those who are looking at mobility and looking at compactness, but they still don't want to sacrifice the sound nor the styles from the Keytron world. They would like to have access to those with their existing gear. That exactly is who the EVM is for, but we'll talk about that more later. So how do we work all of this? How do we work with that screen? Let's go into the screen so you can see what we're looking at right here. So this is what your control interface looks like. And the good thing about this is it does not really change, right? So if you look at the sides of this, these remain stagnant because these represent your panel buttons that you have on the event. What changes is your screen. So this becomes your actual screen within a screen, right? So this is your interface control and this is your screen. So depending on where you're at, okay? If I go to exit, that's my normal event screen. Okay, so if I go for an example into the player button, all right, my screen is going to display the various files that I have in the player. I can go out of there and I can get back to my regular, uh, you know, root directory of my drive within the event EVM as well. Okay, so this again are, again, panel controls for the different functionality and this becomes your event screen that's your regular screen that you would find on the regular event products and all of that is touch eh? because you can go in there for example do my start and stop i can go in and say go to my mode and if you notice what i have here on my screen the evm is going to now push you or allow you to use some of the other interesting features which are otherwise not being used by other event products let me go back to that screen and see if I can share this with you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about there. So because this is a touchscreen interface, you want to focus, if you're a live player, for example, you're performing with another arranger keyboard and you have this before you, you want to avoid having to push many buttons because sometimes, for example, you might want to touch arranger A and you might slip and touch the B because it's a touch screen, right? So in this particular scenario, what I've done is I have turned, I have gone into my mode and I have turned on my auto fill mode so that when I play the style, I just touch one button and you can hear there's a fill before that. If I turn that off, okay, what would happen is normally, if I do Arranger A, start. If I go to Arranger B, it simply goes to Arranger B, right? So it goes from Arranger to Arranger without a fill. But if I have that turned on, and I hit a variation, there's a fill. There's a fill before it makes a switch. Of course, I can still introduce a fill right there, okay? 
But the good thing about that feature now is I have less buttons to push. Remember, I'm trying not to make mistakes as I'm performing live. And some of the things that the other event X offers, which, for, which will be beneficial to a live musician, is the fact that they have the physical controls on there. So there's a tactical response. When you push a button, there's just something about having that response that lets you know that indeed you have pushed that button. Now, of course, on the EVM as well, I can go into the uh, uh, menu and I can go into my preference and I can turn on the buzzer. So that with the buzzer on now, what it allows me to do is every time I press a button, I get a confirmation beep, right? In terms of, you know, a confirmation. But that's an audio confirmation. It's not the same as having a tactical response on your finger when you push an actual button. And so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of going this route versus using the Event X module, which is what I would think uh, more preferable for those who are out gigging, uh, going in and out every day, plugging it in and out and playing instruments as well. And they want to be able to have assertion or confirmation of what they touch. Which again, in my opinion, leads me to believe that the EVM, if I had to rank this, would be for those in the studio, number one, okay? Because in the studio, you are in a more relaxed environment, and so you can actually be able to access this, and you have room to make mistakes, and maybe you don't touch the right thing, or maybe you do touch the right thing, which means that you will be able to have time to control that, or time to rectify that, and take care of your mistake, which you would not be able to do when you're performing live. Now, for those of you who have to use two hands to create a sound, I'm talking about guitar players, for example, and accordion players, it even becomes more of a bigger challenge because you are playing the instrument with both of your hands. And when you leave your instrument to touch the screen, you better make sure you're touching the right spot, right? Because you want to make sure you can get in there, get a confirmation and get back out. Having said that though, I'm not totally trying to annihilate or leave those people out because they can still use registrations and they can still use pedals, right? The best case about this also is that there is no compromise in terms of your sound and your styles because you have the entire event library of sound, styles, and features at your fingertips. So that is a big plus, okay? Now let's go back here so you can see what we're doing over. So, Apart from being able to just simply touch and control the different functionalities on your touch screen, again, I had mentioned before that you are now privy to being able to use some of the other features that Keytron uh, provides for you that will allow you to even better utilize the touch screen, such as, in my case here, the locking of the real bass and chords, the automatic fill modes, the introduction to A, which means that whenever I press the intro, it, regardless of what variation I'm on, when I press introduction, it plays that intro and it starts to go into A. Now you may or you may not want to use that particular feature. That is up to you to decide. So again, like I said before, that was the layout and this is the some of the advantages of having the new EVM. I think more importantly to many musicians is going to be the price. For over $700 less than your regular Event X, you can still have access to the event's features and functionality uh, for way less. But the compromise to that would of course be now dealing with a touchscreen if you don't uh, want to go that particular route. Of course you have the Event X which will be able to give you everything with the panel for a little bit more, but you have a little bit more assurance, okay? Now, if you are from another Arranger world, such as Yamaha, Roland, Core, Kurzweil, and any other brand, the beauty about the EVM is that the EVM is an add-on without the extra weight or the extra keyboard or extra uh, real estate, right? And what do I mean by that? Take this example, all right, I have a PSR 3000 over here. I might just want to simply integrate my EVM into this, which means that I want to be able to use the arranger or the styles. So in this case, I would turn this all the way down. I don't want to hear any sounds from here. I want to simply use this and use the arrangement from the EVM. Go here, get out of this menu, get back to my default, pick my style, and in this case, let's see, Zook Remix, and start to play. Now, how does this benefit me? I might not have this quality of style or quality of sound on my existing Arranger keyboard. 
and I don't want to purchase another keyboard altogether. So what this allows me to do is I can, in a nutshell, purchase the EVM and use the EVM in conjunction with my existing Arranger keyboard to be able to produce something such as this. And of course, bring up the bass. Now, some of you are going to ask a question, but really, that sounds beautiful, but are you not playing anything on that? No, the volume on the Yamaha is totally turned off. I'm going to do another example where I can integrate the arrangement parts of this keyboard together with the arrangement parts of the EVM. And that's the beauty of having both of the, you know, the best of both worlds. But in this example, for this video, I'm just going to stick with this. How am I going to use the styles of the EVM with my Yamaha? Listen to this. Now, again, what is the strength of the EVM? What is the strength of the entire event series? Live accompaniment parts. So what is this going to do for me in this case? I'm going to take down the drums, take down the bass. Just having these live guitars alone. That's coming from the EVM, but I'm controlling that with my Ranger keyboard. Okay? And remember, because I have those live guitars, I can use those live guitars in any style. I can say, you know what? Uh, let me try and do some other guitar in there, right? Go to my exit for an example, and I can go over here. Let's switch over to this screen so you can see exactly from the side how this looks and how easy this is to operate, right? So I can go into my view and modeling. I can go into my chords, and right now I have that Zook guitar. I'm going to go in there and say, listen, I don't want to use that guitar for this particular style. Or let me do the example this way. Since Zook is not that famous around the world yet, but it will be hopefully someday, right? Let's go into ballad. I'm going to pick a ballad style here. Let's see. I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, this one over there, right? All right. So this is a style. Here's the bass, the human bass, right? And the live guitar long chord is the down strum that you hear at the beginning of the chord, right? Now let's go in and change that live guitar. I'm gonna go into my user section. I'm gonna pick another one here. This is all being played by the EVM, all right? Everything right here, even the walking bass line, okay? So let's say I wanna pick a sax.
So in the next video, we're going to talk about integration of actually going into style parts. And if you are an arranger user, how can you integrate styles or the component, the live drums and the live bass and the live guitar from the EVM or the event series into your existing keyboard? And in another video, we'll visit the aspect of the workstation or the synthesizer keyboards. How would the EVM benefit them? So we'll say good night for now. This is just an introduction to the EVM, just to give you an idea of this wonderful product, which is now available for sale. If you have any more information and you want to get some more about the event or the event X or the event 61 or the event Chrome, the family just keeps growing and growing. Don't hesitate to contact us with the information you see on the screen and we're going to leave some information in the description below as well so you can reach out to us with regards to more information on your Keytron products. Again, this is AJ at Keytron USA. Have a blessed evening. Good night.